back to poor boy's little homestead thanks for dropping in if this is your first time here please come back anytime today i'm going to be showing you nine organic sprays that you can use in your gardening to help with your insects funguses and diseases on your plants first i'm going to start off with one of my favorites neem oil now when you get neem oil you want to make sure you get 100 percent cold pressed neem oil with as directing in it i hope i pronounced that right if you buy a neem oil and it ain't got the as directing in it you that's kind of like having a baloney sandwich without the baloney the as directing is the main ingredient in the natural neem oil that kills pests. The way I understand that is, the reason is organic. It's good for all chewing insects. And when you spray this on your plant leaves and they chew on your leaves, it goes into their intestines. And the, as directing is what malfunctions their intestines and that may not be exactly right but it's something that appears with inside the insects and it kills them we just leave it at that how about that but anyway on the neem oil you want to want mix one to two tablespoons of neem oil per gallon of water I got just a half a gallon clear bottle here to demonstrate so y'all can see. And I ain't gonna pour, measure this. I'm gonna just pour some to show y'all. When you pour neem oil or any other kind of oil in your water, the oil goes straight to the top. You can shake it and it'll mix up but then it automatically all comes back to the top so this is why you want to use soap now myself i just use plain dawn soap but you can use any kind of soap you want just make sure it ain't got no additives in it no bleach or anything added just plain simple soap I like to don't, I don't try to use no measurement on soap because I've used different soaps and it takes different amounts but I just squirt a little soap in there and you shake it up but if it evenly distributes your oil through that water you see it ain't no oil coming back to the top now that's enough soap I may have could have got by with a little less but if you put some soap in there and you shake it up and you sit there and watch it and your oil starts gathering back to the top, just add your little, bo little more oil. But you want to spray this every five to seven days as a preventative. You start seeing a lot of insects on it. Increase your dosage up to the two tablespoons per gallon. And spray about every four to five days. That's one of my favorite organic methods. 100% cold pressed neem oil with the as directing in it. One to two tablespoons per gallon of water. And like I said, mix just enough soap to make it evenly distribute your oil throughout your water. That's my number one. Number two is one that I don't use much, but you can just use your soap and water. <clears throat> Mix you up one to two tablespoons per gallon of water and spray straight on your plants. But this is gonna have to be a direct hit. 
what I mean by that if you got insects on there what I call soft shell bugs you spray this soap and water on them and it hits them and it'll smother them a lot of your insects they actually breathe through their through their cells in their body and this will kill them like I said this that'll work for for some but I, I normally don't do that I go straight to my neem oil or oil so with that being said we'll go to regular oil next so number three you can just mix you oil one to two tablespoons per gallon use your soap just like I showed you on the neem oil to mix with your oil to make it evenly break down and distribute through your water and to me, this is kind of like supercharging a regular soap spray. So you all will smother the bugs faster than just the soap, but the, the combination of both, the weight of the oil and the soap, it kind of kind of supercharged is the soap here. So if you just got a small few plants you're doing on your back porch, so you might get by with just spraying soap and water. You can go just to regular cooking oil, any kind of cooking oil you want. Not have to buy no neem oil. So that's three. Number four is probably my second favorite. That's baking soda. Just plain, pure baking soda. Y'all say that's a big old bag. Yep. I'm going to give y'all a little tip. You can go to Wally World and go back there in the swimming pool department and you can buy this 12-pound bag of baking soda for like $6. Then you got baking soda you can put in you some little jars or however you want it and keep some in the garden and have some other for your house. Anyway, cheap way to buy baking soda. But you mix this one to two tablespoons per gallon of water. And when you're mixing it up, just put about 10 drops of soap. You, know, you ain't going to see nothing in there. The soap just kind of helps it stick to your plants when you're spreading it. And this is good for funguses, diseases on your tomatoes, powdery mildew on your cucumbers and squash. You want to spread about every five to seven days as a preventive. Or if you start getting mildew and powdery mildew and funguses, Spread about every four to five days. And I'm going to say this again. Everything I'm telling you here, you start out on your weekend. Test spray some of your leaves. Wait about 48 hours. And then you'll know how it's going to react to your plants. I test spray. Even, even though I've been using this, before I use it this year, I test spray. And then I start using it. But that is also, a lot of times, I don't split this, I don't spray baking soda and neem oil separately. I go on and mix my neem oil and go on and put me a tablespoon of baking soda in my neem oil spray with my soap and water. And spray it in one spray once a week, just as a preventive. Third up. And I'm going to say this is ties with number two with the baking soda. I don't know that I could put baking soda ahead of peroxide or peroxide ahead of the baking soda, but hydrogen peroxide. Same old hydrogen peroxide you buy at your dollar store, Walmart, grocery store, pharmacy that you use in your house, in your bathroom. Whatever you use hydrogen peroxide for, it's the same hydrogen peroxide. This here is good for like early blight leaf spot funguses on your tomatoes as a preventive spread about every seven to 14 days now if you start getting diseases early early blight leaf spot any of that on your tomatoes mix this about 10 to 16 tablespoons per gallon and start spreading about once a week it's really good on your tomatoes 
So what we on there? Number five. Number six is whole milk. That's it. Milk just like you drink for your breakfast. You mix this eight parts water to one part milk. Put it in your pump up sprayer. You spray that every five to seven days on your cucumbers and squash when they got powdery mildew. But you want to spray this after the dew's dried off of your plants in the morning. After they totally dry, then spray your milk on your powdery mildew. I haven't tried, but I often wonder if powdered would milk. If powdered milk would do the same thing. And I may test that out one day. So if any of you guys ever use powdered milk, please leave it in the comments. Let me know if it works or not. Number seven, aspirin. This here's just Equate brand cheap aspirin. 325 milligram tablets. You put one tablet per gallon of water. You can spray down on your tomato leaves or you can just water your plant, one gallon of water per plant. Now what I do, I usually crush this aspirin up and put it in me some warm water to get it dissolved good before I put it in a gallon of water and put it in my pump up sprayer or just straight pour it, water in my tomato. But it's something about the hormone in a tomato is the same hormone that's in an aspirin that when a tomato starts getting a disease or something that hormone reacts to help it fight off that disease to where when you water it with an aspirin with it in it it'll go on and make that tomato think it's getting a disease and it'll go on and react and I guess kick in its hormones start trying to fight off the disease like i said all this stuff i really can't explain to y'all why it works and how it works it's just old remedies that's been around forever and they seem to work number eight epsom salt magnesium sulfite now every time i plant a plant i put about a tablespoon of this in the bottom of the hole and i cover it up with the dirt before i put my plant in it but also, this is good to use on your squash. If you got squash and you know they doing good and you're watering them the way they're supposed to do, but yet your leaves is getting yellow and you look and you can't find no vine borers, you just don't know what's going on with it, mix your two tablespoons of Epsom salt with a gallon of water and spray on all your leaves on your squash. Soak them down good and round the soil and everything with it. Now, I don't know what it is. Can't explain that neither, but it'll help turn your squash back green if ain't nothing else ailing them. Number nine. I'll put this on the screen for y'all because all I'm gonna call it is BT. You can get BT. Now this right here, what I got here is this here's in a caterpillar killer spray with BT. So this one's not organic, but you can get organic BT. Like I said, I'll put it on the screen here, what that stands for. And you mix it up as the directions on the container you get it in. And it'll kill any chewing insect, tomato horn worms. Now this, this was my last resort, but last year I got hit by the tomato hornworms and I couldn't find a, just the BT organic. So I got this. And that BT, it, it cleared up the hornworms in my tomatoes. It's something, it's a natural bacteria that when the insects and worms eat it, it affects their intestines and stuff or something other. I ain't sure about all that neither, but it's called BT. And one of the last deals I got right here is just sticky glue. 
And again, I can't remember where I ordered this from, but this here, you can get a quart of it. I think you need to buy it by a gallon. This is, this is called TAD, T-A-D. But there's all different brand names of sticky glue out there. You just have your old paintbrush. And you take this right here and you take your yellow cup. I like using yellow in my garden. Paint it all on that cup inside and out. Have your little something to hang these cups around. And all your aphids, any kind of insects that lights on this cup, they stuck. I know some of you are going to say, well, what about your honeybees and stuff? Well, I don't know. Maybe because it ain't got a scent to it, but the honeybees, I didn't ever, maybe one or two honeybees I seen stuck on mine last year. And I don't know if that's because it ain't got no scent or what to where some of the other insects just attracted to the yellow and fly there and stick. And I'm gonna attach a clip in here of, I got some of these cups, which I don't think they're yellow up there at my outside cook shack hanging up. And I'm gonna attach a clip, show y'all how many insects and flies and stuff, when they light on this, they stick. Now guys, that's what the sticky glue does when you mop it on a cup. Anything lights on it. It's stuck. But another good thing to use this with, and the reason I'm including it in my, is because you don't really put this on the plants, but I got one exception I do. That's on your okra plants. When you got that okra in them pods, it's getting pretty, and you come out there one day and you got ants all up there eating on your okra. You take this sticky glue and this paintbrush, and down on the bottom of your stalk, you you mop this on there about 10 inches to a foot all the way around that stalk. Them little ants can't cook it. They can't make it through this glue. They stick to you. Stick to your plant down there. And it, and it don't affect your plant. So it's just sticky glue on the bottom of it. But it really stopped the ants from going up my okra stalks. But anyway, guys, like I said, I can't really explain to y'all in depth the why this, some of this works and how it works. It's just a, some natural old remedy that's it's been around forever. People's used, and they do work. The neem oil would be my number one. Baking soda and hydrogen peroxide is probably tied for number two. And then when things really get bad, I go to this BT for the chewing insects. It's good for the... But this right here says for cabbage loopers, horn worms, cabbage worms, any kind of, any kind of insect that's not going to chew. If they done getting, getting where the neem oil ain't keeping them in control, get you some BT in. Hit it a few times with that. But anyway, guys, I hope this little video helps somebody out out there. If you will, please hit that subscribe button, like, share. That'll help me grow my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time. God bless.